Yo, homie, is that my briefcase? Is it your briefcase? Yeah, it is. Why, you want it back? How about your wallet? What else you got for me? Huh? Hello everyone, I'm Brett, and welcome to Nightwood Guns. Today we are going to be talking about a blast from the past, still in my opinion, one of the best handguns ever devised, the HK USP. Is this gun worthy of its spot in the Handgun Hall of Fame, or is it just obsolete now? Well, we're gonna find out in today's review. Grayson deftly raised his revolver and pulled the double action trigger. The cylinder rotated and the hammer cycled, igniting a vicious blast from the muzzle of the gun. The man's poncho violently ripped where the 44 Magnum bullet entered, but he seemed unaffected as the bullet exited his back with great velocity. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I was just reading an excerpt from my short novel, Armed Instinct, available in the link in the description below, along with its sequel, Countdown to Dawn. If you'd like to support the channel, be sure to pick up a couple of copies of the books and leave reviews for them on Amazon. And also, I am so grateful the channel is growing super quickly, and it's because you guys are liking my videos, commenting down below, and subscribing, and I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for showing my channel your support. And now that we've covered all of that, let's get into the one, the only, the Heckler & Koch Universal Service Pistol. So as you guys know, I'm going to cover the positives and then the negatives, my overall opinions and thoughts of the guns. This isn't a history lesson on the gun, this is just... Is the gun relevant? Do I like it? Would I recommend it? You're here for my opinion, so I'm gonna give it to you straight. So first of all, in order to address the positives, we have to understand that this handgun is essentially a relic from another era. Is it obsolete? In my opinion, it is not. It still serves a very clear purpose. It is the best gun for a gray-haired Tom Cruise to use in a nightclub. It is the best gun to use to rescue an annoying, sniveling little boy. But most importantly, what do you mean, Metal Gear? Hey, Snake, you found a handgun. Uh, it's a decent one. USP. The USP fires real bullets. There's no getting around the fact that this gun is iconic in every single medium of entertainment. And that is the first positive of this gun. The aesthetics are unmatched as far as a duty firearm goes. The scalloping on the slide, the overall aggressive angular. I can't even look at the camera, I'm too busy looking at it. This thing just looks mean, effective, and aggressive. But looks aren't everything. The number one positive of the HK USP is it is still unmatched in being the most durable, most reliable, semi-automatic pistol ever made. And before the Glock guys all jump on me and try to kiss me, I'm going to insult HK now too, which is, in my opinion, HK peaked with the USP. BP9's a fine gun, P30's a fine gun, the p 2000s a fine gun, but I'm going to encourage you to look up torture tests on those guns and then go to Military Arms Channel and watch his torture test of the USP. This gun comes from an era where they wanted to make this gun more reliable, more durable, and more accurate than it had to be. But when you toss pretty much any other handgun in a pit of sand, it pretty much ceases to function. But the HK USP was voted in its yearbook as most likely to function in any adverse condition. Now there was a time when I actually gave the USP crap because I thought it was overpriced because it was a plastic gun and you were just paying for the initials HK on the slide. And while this gun is creeping towards $1,000 nowadays, that might actually still be true a little bit, but it can't be denied that this gun is overbuilt and over-accurized, even without the O-ring from the Expert model and the Mark 23. Just like everything else on this gun, the fit and finish is better than it needs to be. The trigger on this gun for a plastic gun is actually surprisingly good, especially one that's built for use in adverse conditions. We got the take up here, got a very crisp, clean break with not a lot of over travel. And like I said, this doesn't have the over travel stop that the tactical and the expert have. And of course the reset. Not the best, but not terrible by any means. Remember when guns used to give you options where you could carry either single action cocked and locked like a 1911, or you could use the decocker and carry it double action first shot. Or if you're an absolute safety nerd, you can carry it double action first pull with the safety on. The HK USP was so far ahead of its time along with everything else HK was pumping out at the time. I mean, the MP5, the P7, the VP70. But the stippling on the gun by today's standards is a little bit smooth, but it's also better than a lot of factory options nowadays. It's just they were really far ahead of their time by putting this kind of texturing on the grip. Along with the checkering on the front strap, 
and the back strap. You can really get a solid purchase on this gun. And the way they designed the recoil spring assembly, it actually absorbs a lot of recoil. So this guy chambered in 45 ACP really doesn't recoil that much. It's a very soft shooting gun. And the same applies for the nine and 40 as well. While the sights are the dated three white dots, they are steel, which is more than most companies can say. You know, the true quality of the USP can be felt when you actually remove the barrel from the gun and hold it in your hand. Just the weight and how solid it is and how well fit and finished it is. It's just something that you don't really see nowadays in polymer guns that are just completely mass produced where they are trying to balance making a quality firearm while still being able to mass produce it for as cheap as possible. The USP is simply over-engineered and it really kind of makes you nostalgic for those days where you wanted something that was overbuilt. So what role does this still serve? Man, this is the perfect doomsday gun. You don't have to worry about cleaning it. You can drop this thing in dirt, sand, mud, whatever, and it's gonna keep on chugging. If you want a gun that will work no matter what, the HK USP is your gun. But nothing is perfect, and like I said, this is a bit of a relic nowadays, so let's take a look in the mirror, face the realities of aging and our mortality, and dive into some negatives. This will be a negative for some people. There is no button option for the magazine release. It is only the lever, but man, I love the paddle magazine release. So to me, it's not a negative, but it might be a negative for some people. And obviously the biggest negative that also really dates the gun is the proprietary rail mount. Now granted, there are high quality aftermarket adapters for Picatinny rails that completely solve this issue, but it's an additional cost outside of what you get from the factory. I've also seen people complain about this giant surfboard of a slide release here. But to be honest, the thing has never gotten in my way. In fact, I actually like it because despite the size of the USP 45, I can actually reach the slide release over the safety with my thumb. Outside of those negatives, the only other negative is the price. These things go for between 900 and 1100 bucks nowadays. And when you take a look at the modern market and you see what you can get for between 900 and 1100 dollars, you can get a lot more bang for your buck, especially within the realm of practicality. If you don't need a gun, that's reliability is worthy of the Doom Slayer. The vast majority of modern handguns are incredibly reliable in conditions that you would find in duty or concealed carry or home defense. A lot of these companies just realized that you don't need a gun that can reliably function after being buried in 10 feet of wet concrete for 13 days. And I guess they also realize that you don't need a gun that has a trigger guard that could fit like 14 gloved fingers in it. I mean, pretty much the only thing holding this gun back is not having the amenities that modern firearms have, like being cut for a red dot or having an updated rail system. I mean, people have even largely moved away from double action, single action guns. Striker fire is kind of ruling the world and now 2011s are kind of popping in, but double action, single action is becoming a hipster thing. So all of that being said, would I recommend the HK USP? Absolutely, yes I would. If you want a handgun that doesn't make excuses, a gun that will function in any environment, period, the USP is it. And you know what? It would make an excellent concealed carry firearm, an excellent duty firearm, as long as you don't mind the manual of arms. Sure, it doesn't have modern bells and whistles, but you know what? It has the bells and whistles of years past, which is being an absolute wrecking ball freight train of a semi-automatic pistol. So whether it's for nostalgia or whether you demand ultimate reliability in all conditions, the HK USP gets the Nightwood gun stamp of approval. And while Langdon Tactical has revived the P30 and the P2000, I would love to see them do something with the USP to bring this sucker back. I'm grateful that HK is still making this and part of that might weirdly be thanks to California since it's still on roster. So let me know what you think of the USP in the comments down below. Is this thing obsolete in your eyes? And whether or not you think that, let me know which movie, video game, or anime that you absolutely love this thing from. Because the HK USP is in the Handgun Hall of Fame and is undeniably an icon. If you wanna support the channel, be sure to check the link in the description below. Check out my books, buy them if you haven't already. If you have, be sure to leave a review on Amazon. That is the number one way you can help support the channel. Thanks for stopping by and watching a review of one of my favorite handguns of years past. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I'm Brett and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out. Mm -hmm.